What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we've got another fantasy football mock draft for you. And yes, it's still only May. But look, before you know it, we're going to be putting out fantasy football content every single day. The draft guide is going to be available, as is the case every single year. Uh, so until we get to that point, we're going to be doing uh, a lot of these mocks. And today, we've got a 12-team full PPR mock. We've got the first pick overall, so should be pretty interesting as far as the roster is concerned. One quarterback, two RBs, two wide receivers, a tight end, a flex, and then five bench spots. Uh, we're not going to mess with the positional values too much yet. Maybe once we finalize some of our rankings, we will. But for now, let's not get too crazy. Um, but other than that, yeah, look, if you guys enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us there. Let us hear it in the comments section for sure. Your thoughts on these picks, on these teams. Uh, but with that being said, let's kick it off. We've got the 101, uh, an enviable position every single year, one that's, uh, you know, kind of looked at and tried to be broken down to see what the best pick is, who the best player is. And this year, similar to every single other year, it's running back. And the question you have to answer is, do you want to go Jonathan Taylor? Do you want to go Christian McCaffrey? This is full PPR scoring, so I would argue Christian McCaffrey has the higher ceiling. Uh, but obviously, with the first pick overall, you kind of want to minimize risk a little bit. And McCaffrey, these last two seasons has burned you big time. But despite that, he's still in contention for the 101, which shows you how freaking amazing he is. And then Jonathan Taylor, I mean, yes, he won't catch as many passes as McCaffrey, but he's got much higher touchdown upside. Uh, you know, what are we going to do here? Again, I don't think you could really go wrong either way. In full PPR scoring, I do have Christian McCaffrey a little bit higher than Jonathan Taylor. So let's go with that for now. Again, I I don't think you could go wrong either way. If you want to go Jonathan Taylor, if you want to go Christian McCaffrey, to me, both those guys are in that tier one category. Uh, maybe you can make a case for Austin Eckler, but in my opinion, you know, I think he won't get as much usage as those guys, so maybe he's a little bit lower. Uh, but let's look at what's taking place in this first round because I do want to break it down to see if anything crazy has happened uh, and kind of just highlight some names. So after McCaffrey and Jonathan Taylor, who went one and two respectively, you see a couple names that I really like. DeAndre Swift at the 103. Now, even though I'm a big DeAndre Swift guy, to me, that is earlier than I would like to take him. I'd take Austin Eckler ahead of him. I'd probably take Dalvin Cook ahead of him, maybe even Najee Harris. Uh, but all things considered, those first six picks, I have zero problem with. Then you see De Derrick Henry. Uh, again, this is full PPR scoring, so maybe I'd have him a little bit lower. Uh, after that, you see Cooper Cup, Justin Jefferson. Alvin Kamara is a guy. Uh, he goes here at 110. That's really interesting. Uh, you know, I've done some mock drafts here and there up until this point. Sometimes you see Kamara go in the second round. I would say it's probably due to a concern of, you know, just the change in New Orleans, the quarterback situation, and then his upcoming legal uh, troubles, if you will, his hearing, what that's going to lead to. Now, ultimately, I'd probably say nothing happens and he plays the majority of the season, won't get suspended or anything like that. So I think he will make his way into a first round selection, probably kind of where you see him go here. So zero problem with that. Then you see Leonard Fournette. I'd probably have him outside of the first round after the Bucks spent some, you know, Relatively speaking, early draft capital on a pass catching running back, which is going to lower the upside for Fournette. Then Javante Williams, I honestly, I hate Javante Williams as a first round selection with Melvin Gordon there. That's going to be a running back by committee. I'm passing on Javante for redraft purposes. Uh, then you see kind of a run on pass catchers, Devontae Adams, uh, Jamar Chase, Debo Samuel, sandwiched in between those guys. You've got James Conner and Aaron Jones. I like the value on Aaron Jones there. Joe Mixon at the 206. That's uh, not really going to happen all that often. I'll tell you that right now. That's probably the best value that you're going to see here in the second round. Hell, maybe even an entire draft. He's probably going to be a first round pick uh, towards the end of the first round. Then uh, Stephon Diggs, Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, CeeDee Lamb, Mark Andrews. So what stands out here? The two tight ends, Kelsey, Andrews, however you have them ranked. Uh, going towards the end of the second round, I think that's probably pretty accurate. Tyreek Hill going in the middle of the second round. There's guys I'd take ahead of him now that he's in Miami, doesn't have Mahomes, and he's going to be competing with Jalen Waddle. So 
Uh, that's kind of something that I point out. Good value in Stefan Diggs at the 207. But let's look at our cheat sheet here and see if there's any, you know, kind of just tremendous value that's still left out there that we can capitalize on. And immediately I see one name in Keenan Allen that I know I want to draft because here, if we don't address the wide receiver position now, uh, I think it's kind of going to be slim pickings like 20 picks afterwards if we went, you know, three running backs in a row. So I'm going to go Keenan Allen with one of these selections. I'm definitely not taking a quarterback. I know that for sure. Uh, we're going to be able to get good value later on. And here now the question is, what do you want to do? Do you want to get another wide receiver or do you want to get a running back? Uh, you know, maybe if we had gone Jonathan Taylor, who's a little bit safer, we don't have to worry as much about injury risk as a Christian McCaffrey. We could go wide receiver. We could go an AJ Brown, even though I don't really like his upside with Jalen Hurts all that much. Uh, maybe a Mike Evans, maybe a Jalen Waddell, a DJ Moore, a Michael Pittman, you know, guys that I like that kind of just throwing out names there. So right now, as a result, I'll probably actually go running back. The question is, do you go somebody like a Nick Chubb, who I think is purely a standard scoring running back? Uh, and for that reason, I'm kind of out on Saquon Barkley is intriguing. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Obviously, he's taken a big time tumble because he's on the New York Giants. He screwed you the last couple of years. Uh, but I still think the upside is there. I really do. Uh, so he could be somebody that I look at right now. I probably say I'm looking at Chubb. I'm looking at Barkley, Ezekiel Elliott, potentially. Uh, but you know what? I'm going to hold off on Zeke because I want to see how far he drops. I think that's going to be really an interesting case study for this season. I'm not going tight end here either. I think it's too early for Kyle Pitts. Uh, George Kittle, I would have potentially ahead of Kyle Pitts in redraft formats. Uh, so this is coming down to Nick Chubb or Saquon Barkley. And, you know, even though I, I will say Nick Chubb is more of that standard scoring running back, I do think he's a little bit safer than Saquon Barkley. And because we did go Christian McCaffrey first overall, I'm just going to go Nick Chubb right now. Uh, so let's do that and then see what happens at the running back position afterwards. And... This is really interesting right now that I'm looking at it play out, and I really want to break this down. So look, after our selection of Keenan Allen and Nick Chubb, you see Saquon Barkley go. That's not a surprise. T. Higgins, Josh Allen, first quarterback off the board in the third round. It's usually probably where you're going to see the first quarterback go, as is the case most years than A.J. Brown. Cam Akers at 306. I really don't like that. I think it's going to be a running back by committee there. I have Akers much lower than the consensus. Mike Evans, Kyle Pitts. I'd be drafting George Kittle ahead of Kyle Pitts. Pittman, I like. Herbert, again, he's probably going to be the second. You know, top three quarterbacks taken. Deontay Johnson, David Montgomery, uh, Antonio Gibson falling all the way to the fourth round. That's really interesting. You know, at that point, I think that becomes a good value, uh, even though it's kind of trending to be a running back by committee there as well, uh, with Robinson being drafted, with McKissick being there. So I understand the worry. Uh, then Jalen Waddle, TJ Hawkinson being drafted, you know, as much as I love him ahead of George Kittle, I wouldn't be doing that. Uh, Brees Hall also being drafted ahead of guys like Zeke, ahead of Elijah Mitchell. That's absolutely bonkers to me. I would not, and I repeat, not do that. Um, I'd have him probably closer to my 20th overall running back, if not lower. And you see some really good wide receivers go here. Terry McLaurin, DJ Moore, Hopkins, even though he will be suspended for six games, it's going to be appealed, but I don't think anything is going to happen. Allen Robinson is sneaky, good value there. I was really hoping he would come back to us. Amari Cooper would have loved to get Allen Robinson there with Matthew Stafford uh, in LA. But right now, again, I said it before, I'm not going quarterback yet. I think Ezekiel Elliott right now presents tremendous, tremendous value. Looking at the wide receiver, there's one name that I really like in Chris Godwin, kind of that PPR guy. Tom Brady's there. Yes, Russell Gage joined, but I don't think, you know, his upside is quite as high as what Antonio Brown was these last couple of, uh, you know, call it a year and a half. So I do like Chris Godwin. Michael Thomas is interesting, uh, but I I do have Godwin higher just because of Tom Brady. Um, and then looking at these other wide receivers, 
you know, Mooney, I really like. I like Marquise Brown. I like I really like Mike Williams. I've already got Keenan Allen, so don't have to get too crazy there. But I think right now, just value-wise, you got to go Ezekiel Elliott with one of these picks. Josh Jacobs, I'm really worried about his pass catching. Last year, he did very well in that category, but Darren Waller was hurt. Uh, and they pretty much had zero pass catchers other than Renfro. Now you've got Renfro, you've got Waller back, and you've got Devontae Adams. I think Josh Jacobs is kind of back to that standard scoring uh, running back uh, tier. So I'm passing on him, passing on Dobbins, Elijah Mitchell. I'd still rather have Zeke, Travis Etienne. He's intriguing, but he's also coming off an injury. So I'm going Zeke here. Then I'm going to go with probably Chris Godwin at the wide receiver position. Because, you know, I feel good about the running backs that we have. We have Chubb. We have, let's pull up our roster. We have McCaffrey. We've got Zeke. So let's go with Chris Godwin here. I feel really good about that. Uh, Two kind of PPR type of wide receivers. And boy, oh boy, I'm looking at what's available to us right now in terms of these wide receivers. This is absolutely juicy, big time. Uh, Let's break down what happened and what led to these guys being available. You saw Michael Thomas go, Travis Etienne, Jerry Judy, Mahomes, Brendan Cooks, Tyler Lockett. I don't know how you're drafting Tyler Lockett ahead of like Darnell Mooney or, you know, Mike Williams, any of these guys. There's no quarterback in Seattle. Elijah Mitchell, J.K. Dobbins, running backs that I don't like. Sutton, Dalton Schultz, okay. I'd be drafting Darren Waller ahead of him. Hunter Renfro, I think he's going to see a major decrease in targets. Amon Ra, St. Brown, I loved him as a rookie. I think he's going to see a decrease in targets. Then Josh Jacobs, good value in the sixth round. Say what you know, what you will. Lamar Jackson, so a run on quarterbacks here. Damian Harris, Devonta Smith, Kyler Murray, great value in the sixth. A.J. Dillon, Darnell Mooney, Jalen Hurts, Juju. If Kyler Murray was there, I probably would have taken him in the end of the sixth round. I think that would have been very, very good value. Now you're kind of left with that next group, Joe Burrow, Dak Prescott. I don't think that you know, either one of those guys are anything all that crazy. So here I'm going to stick to wide receiver. I think the value is awesome. Uh, and we'll just wait on tight end. You know, um, we're kind of in that next category. So here, what I'm looking at, I'm looking at Marquise Brown. I'm looking at Mike Williams. I'm looking at Rashad Bateman. And even though I've already got Keenan Allen, I think Mike Williams right now is an awesome value. Uh, I can't pass that up. Marquise Brown It's intriguing what's going to happen once DeAndre Hopkins returns. Uh, That's kind of a question that I have. But I got Mike Williams now. Here, what do I want to do? Do I want to go Rashad Bateman, kind of that high upside guy? Or do do I want to go safer with Marquise Brown? I'm probably going to go with Rashad Bateman. He's a guy that I really, really like without Marquise Brown, funny enough, in Baltimore. I think Bateman is going to be getting crazy, crazy targets. Yes, Mark Andrews will probably be the primary beneficiary, but I think Bateman will not be far behind. So let's go Rashad Bateman here. Uh, I like that pick for us. And then see where we stand with these next couple of picks. I expect a lot more quarterbacks are going to go. You know, some backup running backs. A lot of these wide receivers will as well. So you see, yeah, this seventh round full of quarterbacks. Burrow, Dak, Russell Wilson, Trey Lance, Tom Brady. Trey Lance shouldn't be going that early, by the way. Marquise Brown goes with the third pick in the seventh. Miles Sanders, Elijah Moore, Tony Pollard. Um, So there's some really good value here. Uh, Then in the eighth round, Adam Thielen in the eighth round, awesome value. Drake London, I believe that's our first rookie wide receiver. Uh, I kind of expect that for him to be the top rookie wide receiver. So that makes sense. Uh, CEH, Kenneth Walker, Ramondre Stevenson. I think all you can argue in running backs by committees. So, you know... I'm happy we stocked up on running backs. Then Claypool, Tony, Chase Edmonds, Traylon Burks, Kareem Hunt. So let's look at our cheat sheet again here. If there's anything crazy uh, that we're potentially missing, Singletary, Melvin Gordon, Michael Carter. So Cook was drafted by the Bills. Melvin Gordon, uh, he's in, uh, again back in Denver. Yeah, looking at the value here, I think it continues to be wide receiver. Uh, but you know we're probably at a good point where we can draft a quarterback Let's look at our list of teams that have already drafted a quarterback. If everyone's drafted a quarterback, then I can sit, and I actually believe they have, uh, team two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, everybody has a quarterback, so I can afford to wait on this 
and just, you know, kind of a tip to look at that situation in your drafts. So Matthew Stafford should be available in two rounds from now. So right now I can continue to get value. Guys that I really like at the wide receiver position, a tight end. So I'm looking at the tight ends. Dallas Goddard um, is a good value in my opinion. Um, I'm looking at Dawson Knox, Zach Ertz, you know, uh, with Arizona still. I think he's very intriguing. My, My thing with Goddard is there's so many targets there now with Devonta Smith, with A.J. Brown. Uh, Jalen Hurts is a run-first quarterback. I probably have him a little bit lower. I'm looking at Zach Ertz. I think he's pretty tempting, honestly. And I might actually go that way. Let's select a pass catcher first. I'm going to go with Brendan Ayuk here. I do like him as, you know, kind of just a depth piece. Uh, Let's then add our tight end. Again, the question is, who do you go with? Do you go with Goddard? Do you go with Knox, Zach Ertz? I believe in Kyler Murray as a passer of the football more than I do uh, in Jalen Hurts. Uh, You could argue, you know, Dawson Knox for that reason ahead of Zach Ertz. Uh, But, you know, I I think we're at a point at the tight end position where we're going to be getting two tight ends. So just as insurance. So uh, we'll be all right there. Now, what happens here is I think we're going to look out on the quarterback position because like I said before every other team had a quarterback so that affords me to draft Matthew Stafford let's do that right now and then afterwards you know unless there's some really great running backs left or some handcuffs something like that I'm going to go the way of probably just best player available I'm looking at wide receiver We've got some, you know, rookies in Garrett Wilson. Let's see if anything crazy happened here uh, in these last couple of rounds. So a run on tight ends. It's kind of unfortunate. I was hoping somebody like a Cole Kmet could fall to us. Uh, But Dawson Knox instead falls to us, which I think is pretty good value as well. I was considering him the round before. So let's add Dawson Knox as one of our tight ends here. Again, kind of like I said before, as insurance. And then make uh, our final selection afterwards. So we got Dawson Knox with this pick, and then we're going to make one final selection and then wrap this thing up. You know, we could have gone a quarterback, something like that. Um, Guy that I like is David Njoku, but at tight end, I don't know how long, you know, Deshaun Watson is going to be suspended for. So that's something to consider. You know, looking at these quarterbacks, Aaron Rodgers is a really nice backup. Uh, running back again, Damian Pierce, actually at this point in time could be a decent dart throw. Um, he could potentially win out the running back position in Houston, even though it's not a great team. So that's kind of what worries me. Uh, but you know, at this point in time, taking a flyer on, on a running back there, I don't mind that at all. So that's probably what I'm going to do unless there's a wide receiver here that I absolutely love. You know, I'm looking at the list, nobody that really stands out. You know, Corey Davis, DJ Shark, Shepard, Sky Moore is kind of interesting. Van Jefferson, Christian Watson, I do like in Green Bay, but I prefer Alan Lazard. So, yeah, I'm probably going to go with Damian Pierce here. If not, I would have gone with Aaron Rodgers, but let's wrap this thing up. Let's go with Damian Pierce. I'll be curious to see what our draft grade is. I'm guessing it'll be kind of lower because of the tight end position. Um, but you know, I think this is probably a B level draft, uh, and actually fantasy pros agrees with that. That's kind of interesting. So, uh, Matthew Stafford, very happy with that. He's going to be a top 10 quarterback, Christian McCaffrey. You can't go wrong with that. Uh, assuming he stays healthy, then I really like what we did with Chubb with Zeke. Um, so three really strong running backs there. Keenan Allen, Chris Godwin. We got great value at the wide receiver position with Mike Williams, Rashad Bateman, and Uke. We kind of backed up that tight end position. So I, I, I really like it. But hey, let me know your thoughts. Do you agree, disagree, along with any other questions you guys might have? Let's hear it in the comment section. If you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe. Uh, give us a follow on Twitter at AllDayPigskin to continue interacting with us there. But in the meantime, we'll see you guys in future videos.